And we are live. Welcome, mystery and thriller fans. Thanks for holding with us as I undertook the case of the missing author. We can blame daylight <laughs> savings time because here in the U.S. we set we sprung forward yesterday, but in Spain they don't spring forward for two more weeks. So it's nine thirty p.m. at night over there. But Juan, but Juan Gomez Jurado is joining us live from Madrid to give us the inside scoop the night before the book comes out here in the U.S., soon to be a major Amazon TV series. Juan, welcome to Mystery and Thriller Mavens. Tell us about The Red Queen. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot for having me today. And I am especially excited, as you just remind, remind me, that the book is launching tomorrow, which I can promise you, I totally forgot. So I now <laughs> I am more nervous about it. I am more excited. Um, I thought that it was the next week because actually in the in the United Kingdom is going to be next week. So I had my mind like set in into that date, and I am very pleased to announce you that Red Queen is coming out tomorrow, as Sarah just reminded us. And well, this is my, actually my eighth novel. This is the first book in a trilogy. And we have sold like 3 million copies here in Spain. And it's been translated to 17 languages right now. I think that more of them maybe. And this is a story of a very, very smart woman who is recluded in an attic in Madrid because of she had a misjudgment in the past and now she doesn't want to come out and she's like a very good forensic investigator and one of the, the other main character the co-protagonist who is john gutierrez um he wants her to come to come out of the of her reclusion and start investigating um a murder in a very up place um, uh, suburb in Madrid. And that's as far as I want to go right now. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Juan, we cannot wait to hear all about um, your book, about your characters. Um, this is so exciting. Um, and I just want to welcome everyone. So we are broadcasting live to six different destinations across Facebook and YouTube all at once. So, so mystery friends, no matter where you're watching from, you're in the right place. This is the right time. It is Mystery Monday. And because Mondays can be murder, we're going to make them a little less painful for you. So if you've been here before, you know how it works. And if you're new, welcome. We're so happy to have you. Here's how it works. You get to ask this incredible best-selling author of three million copies anything you want about his eight books, his writing process, the Amazon series, ask him anything. So uh, you can just start typing your questions and I'll get them right over to you, over to him. So uh, we have a mystery user saying three million copies. I hate him already, but now I also want to read the book. Um, speaking for all of us there, mystery user. Catherine, <laughs> welcome to the conversation. She says, bienvenido, Juan Gomez Rado, and welcome. Welcome, Catherine. Thank you for joining us. So, Juan, tell us a little bit about your creative. About uh, oh, oh my goodness, Sarah Pinbarrow is here, joining us live from England. So, Sarah's an incredible author. Um, I got to host her for her last book, um, who also has some TV series experience. Sarah, it's such a pleasure to have you. Thank you for joining us. Um, Sarah, let Sarah Pinborough, let us know if you have any questions for, for Juan there. Um, Juan, tell us about your, your creative process. Do you write every day? Do you rise with the sun, go to your desk, have a cup of coffee and start typing? Are you a night writer? Do you stay in your house? Like Antonia, what's your, what's your process like? Um, this is going to be interesting because of <laughs> Uh, actually, the, uh, I don't usually let people inside my office, the real office in which everything happens, which is this one. 
where we, are, where we are right now. But uh, I, I had prepared a set for this interview to take place. But as we, I discovered that <laughs> it was the wrong time, I rushed into, into my real office and here we are. So I can tell you a couple of things. Um, for example, this that you are watching behind me, this is the most important thing for me. The um, window? Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is small table over here okay. is where I start every day. Ooh. It's where, yeah, it's, it's behind a window, actually. The, the sun comes through it in the, in the morning. And then I have my, my little notebooks in which I try to develop every day in every writing session, I start to, to develop what I'm going to do today. This kind of writing using um, small pens or, or, or how do you call it? The fountain pen? The fountain pen. Um, it's kind of helped me with my process, you know? And, and then I start every day writing something about what's going to happen What's going to happen to the, the lead of the scene in which I am writing on? Um, what's the hook? What's the bait? What's the cliffhanger, if any? Um, I'm sorry if I have uh, some problems explaining this as my English is not my, my mother tongue. I'm trying no, to... No, you're great. Slide in my head. And, and then uh, whenever I, I have this, when I have all these small bits and pieces, then I, I try to take a small walk and, and think about everything that I have um, written. And, and then I come back to the, to the computer and I start writing. And th this is obviously the hard part because of, it, it's easier when you are just like writing something uh, about which is in abstract. I mean, kind yeah. of, yeah, it's kind of, there's a big um, car chase, you know, that's easy to write. <laughs> you know, but it's not so easy when you have to 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 take this and you know it very well as a writer to uh, to have all these feelings and and that's images that you have in your head and then you need to translate them into the written world, which is obviously much much more difficult. And it this takes the whole of day for me. I start writing in the morning and then then I go to bed. Uh, uh, very tired <laughs> uh, at the at the end of the day. There's nothing in between. And what and Juan, what do you do on the days when the words won't come? When you feel stuck? When you feel blocked? When it's not flowing? Do you sit there and make yourself keep trying? Do you take a break, or maybe do you not ever feel blocked? Do you just always create? Uh, you know, the, the natural state, if, if you get, let me grab something for you. Yeah, let us see it. Okay. okay. This is, this is a, a small sheet of, a regular sheet of paper, you know? Yes. The regular state of this sheet of paper is to, to be blank, you know? To, 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 if, if you keep staring at this, this is going to keep being white, you know? And there's not, there's, there's not going to be anything in it until you put some effort on this. So my natural state as a writer is, is a state blank as well because of, uh, you know, I, I am much more happier when working with my kids or my wife or my dog or, or I don't know, going around in, in, in the town or having breakfast. I, I love those things. Uh, reading too. What I do hate and I don't like at all, it's to write. I hate it with all my heart. You know, so, um, yeah, I feel blocked every day, every day. So what I do is to try to keep the blood flowing to my, into my fingers and to keep words flowing into, into the screen. So I, I have a kind of a, a small trick which is, um, there's a very famous TV show here in, in Spain that I watched when I was a kid. It was called Marco. It, it was an anime. And then they had this intro and there were a song into, into the introduction, you know? So the, I start writing the, that song, the, 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 the lyrics of the song. And then I write it once and over again until there's something that comes. 
And it's kind of a little bit of The Shining, but with all the killing. <laughs> and it's kind of something like that. Imagine that you were writing, have you seen DuckTales? Have you yeah. seen it? Yeah. Yes. Can you remember yeah. the lyrics of the entry? Like, uh, it's no. always an oh. adventure here in <laughs> Duckburg. Well, but it's something like that. <laughs> I write the lyrics and then I hope to, to something to happen. And then it happens. It, it takes like a minute or two, but then, then it's kind of you, your body just needs to remember that it, need, that it needs to write, you know? Ooh. Oh, I love that. Your body needs to remember that it needs to write. I love that. I love that. Um, thank you for sharing this part of you and your secret space there. Um, and Sarah Pinborough wants us to know that she was the one who made the 3 million comments. <laughs> I love, I love you, Sarah Pinborough. Um, Juan, your book has earned, it is earning incredible praise from both, uh, industry reviewers like Publishers Weekly and as well as your fellow authors. I'm going to pop some of these up now. Um, Publishers Weekly raves that this is nail biting, tantalizing, startling. Um, Lizbeth Salander, Salander fan, uh, devotees will find much to like. So, Juan, what do you think is the secret to writing nail biting, tantalizing, startling suspense? Um, I, I am very used to failure especially in, in the United States, you know? Ooh. My previous novel, it barely sold 2,000 copies. And that was disappointing, <laughs> as you can imagine. Um, because of I, I am a professional author and I need to sell a lot of copies uh, just to pay the mortgage, you know? So, um, actually, wh what happened when my previous novel, it was called The Tipping Point in the United States. Um, it was such a failure. And I was going through a divorce at the same time that I thought, well, this is it. I am obviously mm, not for, uh, made for this, for this job. Mm. And there's not, nothing happening for me. And I better do other things, you know? Maybe I... I look for a job in, in media or something like that. Um, you know, because of I am an idiot and I go from a non-successful career to pursue another <laughs> not successful career because of media here in Spain, they are not doing very well. But well, that's what I do. I am a journalist, you know? So so I try it. I try it to to think about this, what what was going on for me, what what I was doing wrong. And nothing came into my mind. But then I called my agent, uh, mm. Tom Colchi. He's uh, from Brooklyn. And I told him, okay, Tom, um, I'm ready to quit writing. I, I I'm don't know what to do. Mm. I'm really not good for this. And there's nothing going on. And, and he told me, no, you're not going to do that. You're going to tell me your three best ideas for your next novel. And... I am to choose which are going to, what are you going to do next, you know? So I told him my three ideas and he told me, okay, go with that one, with the woman who is very smart, who is the <laughs> most intelligent person in the world because of, there's something there and there's nothing has been like this anywhere. And also I think that you need to, to relate to her a lot, you know? And that, that happened at the same time when my father was very sick and he, he was dying. He was dying of cancer. And then everything got mixed together in my, in my head, kind of the mm -hmm. divorce, the, 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 the failure, mm. the, 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 the pushing in my back of Tom saying, come, come on, go ahead. And then it come all at once in this novel, which reflected how bad I was doing in my own life at that mm. point. And I was very anxious and 
So mm-hmm. that that nail beating exercise, it comes from a very dark place, actually. Mm. But me myself being a very happy <laughs> and tender <laughs> person, you know, I've I've always been, you know, but we all uh, go through dark places sometimes, and that that happened. And I don't know, that's the secret. Have have an immense failure and a father dying. Oh, well, one, first of all, I'm so sorry that your father died of cancer, that he passed away at all. And I'm mm-hmm. sorry that he died of cancer. My mother also died of cancer. And I'm so sorry that you went through that. Sorry um, about that too. And thank you for your honesty and your transparency and your openness about all of this, because I think the tendency is to only talk about the good stuff and the successes. And that makes sets of an impossibly high bar. So being honest and open about the painful parts and the hard parts is very heart filling um, for, for me and I'm sure for so many of us watching. So thank you for this moment of honesty and truth. Um, and it's interesting to know that your divorce, your father's illness and eventual death and then the 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 disappointing sales of the book brought you excuse me <clears throat> to this dark place because Antonia trapped inside from dealing with her own wounds is we can see your your darkness in in her is that true yeah actually it is i mean um i had the idea for this character a long time ago it's been kind of this trilogy has been like 12 years in the making but you know how we writers do is that we have an idea and then this goes into a shelf and then well i have like a folder in which i i try to um keep the ideas which i i think that they are very good but i am not good enough to write them and that the, the label of, of that folder is for whenever I am good enough. And I, I, that's what's happened with me. I, I mean, I really believe in what I do. I really love writing thrillers. I, I mean, I love having written thrillers, <laughs> not writing them actually, you know, because of that's, yes. that's it. the past tense part is, is the best thing of writing. You know that? Yes. <laughs> yes. And then it happens that whenever I'm writing something, I try to do a great thing. I mean, um, it's not enough for me to write some kind of procedural formulaic story because of that's not the, the thing I, I, I like to do because if I get bored very easily, you know? So whenever I try to write something, it's kind of, I had to lift an enormous weight Because of whenever I try to write a new novel, I try to teach myself once and again how the fuck I do write. I mean, (laughs) it's kind of, I need to go to school. Yeah, it's it's, it's like this. I mean, I need to go to school every time, every time, every single time. Um, My my, my, uh, selves over here, they are full, stuck up until the roof. With, with books about writing, about how to write, how to, I, I can read from here, uh, writing for emotional impact, um, damn good story, conflict and suspense, uh, setting, make a scene, um, writing and selling your mystery novel. Okay, that, that's, and, and you, can, you can say, oh yeah, you, but you, you have sold millions of copies, yeah. But I do need to write to understand how to do the writing every time. Because if I need to do something new and I need to do something better than my previous novels. So I forgot your question, but. (laughs) Juan, I am just loving this authenticity of this conversation and knowing that because I feel the same way. I think, how am I going to do this? I don't feel worthy. I don't feel like I know enough. I feel like I'm never going to get it right or get it down. And then every time I do, I think, well, that was a fluke. I'll never do it again. <laughs> so thank you for saying this. It just, I appreciate the, the truth of this conversation so much. And I love- uh, yeah, I remember your question. Um, Tell me. Is that, where did this come from? Yeah. I have no- idea I, honestly Ooh. um 
Yeah, that's the important thing. Because Ooh. whenever we writers are um, questioned by a fellow author or maybe by a reader. Yeah. I don't know if it happens to you, but it happens to me. They're explaining to me what I have done. And I say, okay, that's interesting. I have no idea that that was what I was doing. <laughs> and yeah, it, it happens. Yeah. I've written 10 novels, 10 adult novels, and like 15 novels for kids. And this happens to me every time. It's kind of, they come to me and say, oh, this is seen this happened and and this was connected to this other thing and this was very interesting because of it reminded me of something and I tell them yeah you know what um this is our secret we only re- we only write 50 percent of the book half of the book the other half is happening in your head and you are completing Ooh. with your own experiences with your own taste with your own wisdom what I did to make it a bigger and better story. And that's that's what I've learned about writing is that it's better if you don't have many intentions at all when you are trying to write something. It's kind of just surrender yourself to the story and let's see what happens, you know? Oh my gosh, I love that. The, sur- the idea of surrendering yourself to the story, of, of acknowledging that it's not all you. <laughs> It's kind of like it is. I mean, it's. I don't know if you feel this same way, but whenever I'm writing, it's kind of some part of me is like disconnects and there's another thing going on, happening. And you try to know, to look over your shoulder if to see if there's someone there, like of that topic. It's kind of a cliche that the, the, the characters talk to you. Yeah, it happens. So, but you don't try to look over your shoulder because of you are not, you really don't want to know if they are really talking to you. I want to know. Do you, do you want to know? Yes. I want to know. And I want to know who is talking to me. Where is that divine voice coming from? What is the source of creativity? What is the nucleus of that energy that infuses the story? I mean, I'm probably morbidly curious about things that I shouldn't be. <laughs> I should probably stay on faith. The, 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 yeah, it's kind of a mixed bag because of I think that what it really happens is that writing um, literature and all, all, all the process is always, always about memory. Mm. What you have lived, what you have experienced, Ooh. what you have sensed and felt. And maybe you have not killed someone before. I know I have. I haven't. But um, maybe you can remember how you felt when someone was, when, when something bad happened and you can feel how it is inside of you in a certain way. So then you remember something and then this is mixed with uh, that book that you read, you read like 20 years ago when you were a kid and there was some kind of scene in that place. And then everything goes got mixed in your in your head and then goes through your a heart and your breath and it finishes in the in the in the keyboard you know and then in 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 the page you know something like that i don't know I, Too complicated? I love, no that's perfectly that makes sense because everything we experience is held in our brains and our bodies and our cells and it comes out i think exactly as you said so beautifully um so beautifully um, Steve Berry had some wonderful words f- about your book, Juan, saying it is a labyrinth of mystery, crisply plotted and paced way ahead of the pack. If you like good old fashioned suspense, I know I do, with plenty of intrigue and treachery, this one is for you. Um, congratulations on that. And I want to remind everyone watching with us that the book is out tomorrow here in the U.S. And you can order your copy right now from our favorite 
woman-owned independent bookstore, Murder by the Book. So order your, here it is, whether you're watching on Facebook, on YouTube, wherever, here is the link. So click and order and our good friends at Murder by the Book will send you your copy tomorrow so that you can in, put yourself into the world that Juan has created uh, with Antonia and John Guterres and this brilliant woman who is tra trapped by her own by her choice and her also her wounds in her own house um but using her brilliant mind to solve mysteries and partnering with john guterres you will want to read this uh rebecca who is one of the staff staff members at murder by the book just finished reading an advanced copy she just posted that she loved it so wow. on good authority from Rebecca at Murder by the Book that um, she absolutely loved this book. And soon you will be able to watch it on Amazon as a limited series. Juan, can you tell us anything about the series? Um, yeah, it's not going to be limited. Uh, Great. And I have an NDA that it's like 25 pages long. Is kind of it's and it details everything that I cannot tell you, which <laughs> is a lot of things, uh, because if I can be sued and put in jail, so <laughs> let okay, me see what, what I can get, tell you. Don't get sued and put in jail, please. Stay. We need you out here writing. Yeah, well, oh, I can write in jail actually, is, but uh, I'm not going to be so comfortable. At, so no, that's true. You could we could get you a typewriter. You could still be typing in jail. Yeah, but for the sake of my wife and child, and child uh, you, you know, children, uh, let's see. Um, okay, we have finished main photography, the principal shooting. We, we have okay. finished it. And we have shot a number of episodes, more than five. And, <laughs> and it's, been, it's been a really long and extended way. It's been exhausting. You know, because of for uh, I am also executive producer of of the show and script <gasps> consultant, Yay! and I've been pretty involved in in the script and in the shooting and a lot of things, and I've been honored and humbled because of this not usual, but they allowed me because of they felt that I was not going to be in the middle, just like screaming at things. You know, it's kind of, this is not my book. It was on, on, on all, all the way around. I, when, when they finished the, the last day of shooting, I, I told them, uh, this is amazing. You have made a great service to the story and you have done it beautifully and you have done it better than myself, you know? So um, that's the way I feel. When, when we writers get something inside our heads. It's kind of when, when a story choose you, then you have a responsibility, you know, with, with, for, with the story. Yes. And it doesn't matter if there are 1,000 readers at the other end or a million readers. The, the only thing that it's important is that you need to do the story right. You need to do a favor to the story because of it, it has chosen you in a, in a way, you know? So that's oh. how I feel about the TV show right now. Oh, yes. This resonates. Yes. I love that. I love that. Well, Juan, thank you for sharing that. And also, uh, did you know that Mystery Tribune picked your book as one of the most exciting new releases of 2023? Congratulations on I that. I didn't know that. <laughs> thank you. Yay. Um, Mystery and Suspense Magazine calls your work fresh and appealing. Congratulations on that. And you have so many, so much, so much um, amazing bits of praise from uh, from 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 so many um, reviewers and also authors, um, some likening you to Stieg Larsson, call, calling this similar to for fans who enjoyed the Millennium trilogy, which is fantastic. Congratulations on that. Um, is there anything that you have never told anyone about Antonia that you could share with us today? Um, well, I started with. <laughs> 
with how I felt uh, in in the creative process because if mm. I never told that when whenever I don't like it's going to be a thousand interviews for this book mm. and we, we keep count of that <laughs> because of it's wow. kind of difficult you yeah. know and and this is my first interview for the United States and in the English language and what I felt when you did me that question um, at the beginning is kind of uh, when when Antonia is uh, in the bedside of Marcos, mm. his her husband, um, which is in a coma, and I can tell you why, but she feels res- responsible for that. And he only thinks about, she only thinks about how he's dying. She can do anything about that, but she keeps torturing herself and feeling guilty. Well, that's how I felt when my father was dying. He, mm. he, he was like a week mm. in, in, that, in that process, but he was all the time. During those, t- those moments, th- those final moments, um, mm. He was making jokes, cracking jokes, um, <laughs> trying to make me laugh. And because of I, I am adopted, I am, and we, we were alone in the world at that moment mm. because of he was the last one, and now, now I am, you know. Mm. And that there were no other family at that point, you know. So mm. um, I feel like her. I feel like her. I am no, I am nothing like Antonia Scott. Antonia is the most. Uh, is, is the smartest person in the world. She's the most incredible and intelligent person in the world. She can mm. do s- such amazing things. But I feel for her when she were by her husband mm. dying in bed, you know? So mm. that's that's the moral of the story and I wanted to share it with you. And I hope this doesn't jump into Spain because if I don't want to <laughs> start every... <laughs> Next interview that I'm going to do, it's going kind of going to, right. to, to ask, ask, ask me this, you know, let's hope yeah. that the change is here, you know? Oh, well, Juan, thank you for sharing that story with us. I also am not, I am not as nearly as brilliant as Antonia, but I identify with um, some parts of her character and her fears and her anxieties as someone who has always struggled with anxiety. So I loved seeing that part of her and also seeing her portrayed as so strong and so brilliant, but also so um, human and fragile and, and vulnerable. You know, the, the this happens, you know, because of whenever I found a very clever and brilliant woman and I ask her, did you have trouble because of you're so brilliant and clever and smart? And they always, the, the, the answer is always the same. I did found myself mm, more comfortable playing them than letting show who I am. So that's why she is the way it is. You know, it's, well, you know, it's, it's a, there are so many things to talk about this character. I love her so much. I love her so much. I love her so much. And soon we will all love her so much. Thank you to the way that you drew her um, and the way that you you gave her to us on the page and soon on the screen. So uh, Juan, thank you so much for coming on, even though it is very late in Madrid. Thank you for coming on to share with us. No problem. We we didn't have even dinner because of we we, we have dinner like in into to one hour or something like that. We are very late people. So no, no problem at all. I'm sorry for having been late. Now my calendar in the computer is saying, you have an interview now. So, <laughs> so thanks for that calendar. Oh, well, no, the, the, day, the daylight savings got to us, but thank you for making the time to come thanks with to us. You. Thanks to you um, and to all the amazing people or all, all, all at the other side of the screen and especially to the amazing women that my, of Murder by the Book, please uh, buy from them. N- not my book, buy any book because of independent, independent uh, booksellers need to be sponsorized and, and need to be backed up. So thanks for that too. Yes, thank you for that wonderful shout out. And here again is the link 
Uh, no matter where you're watching from, click and order now so that you can be in the know when the Amazon series comes out. You will already love Antonia as much as we do. So click and order, everyone. Juan Gomez, Gerardo, it has been a pleasure and an honor. Thank you for bringing us into your world and into the world of Antonia. My heart is full. My mind is open. Thank you. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much to you. Muchas gracias a vosotros. It's been a pleasure and an honor, and I hope it happens again very yes. soon. <laughs> Come back when your next book is out. We would love to have you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. See you later tonight here. Adios. <laughs>